I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is the Flipside Podcast, episode 461. On this episode, I'm going to talk to a couple of TikTok content creators we haven't heard from in a couple of months. Later on, we're going to hear from Chris Wells, a incredible musician, power lifter, and of course, TikTok creator who has a growing platform and a growing following. We're going to check in with him to see how things are going in Alabama and things are going with his life as he is making some positive changes and moving forward. First, we're going to hear from Formative Fox, a Canadian content creator, cosplayer, as well as online Twitch streamer who has a rapidly growing following on TikTok as well as Twitch. We're going to talk about a couple of her favorite original characters as well as the community that she is growing and is absolutely utterly humbled to have. This is Formative Fox on the Flipside Podcast. Last time we chatted, no one really saw it because it didn't make the light of day, but uh, you were like set up in a bedroom and you had a giant black screen behind you and it collapsed just as we started. Yep. I'm actually <laughs> in the same space, but I got a new nice desk and I've got a, a full different setup in the back and I've got some lights and my makeup stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm way better set up now. <laughs> <laughs> you, also, you also have a, a better microphone. You have a better mm -hmm. camera. Foxy, you're doing incredible since the last time we talked. Uh, I have my fans to thank for that. I have a lot of that stuff on my wish list, and a lot of it's been gifted to me. So I, I can't take credit for buying it for myself. A lot of people have, have definitely chipped in for that, which I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been about half a year, and you've just continued to grow uh, on social media, TikTok. I brought out a couple of new characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but for the past two months, your interview has been the most popular video on my channels, both audio and video. So, uh -huh. so yeah, I want to talk to you more. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so yeah. glad. Seriously, your video has over 28 hundred views and I haven't had that sort of reaction from uh, any of my interviews other than the likes of uh, Pinky and the Brain, Rob Paulson and Maurice LaMarche, uh, both Commander Shepherds, Mark Mayer, Jennifer Hale, like your, your video is right up there amongst them. So congratulations and it, it speaks to your talent and your community as yeah. to the attention that you garner. That's insane. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I knew you didn't know uh, that. I wanted to drop that. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, how much have you grown within the past six months on social media? Oh, goodness. I think the last time we talked, uh, I can't remember what the numbers were, but at uh, TikTok, I'm almost at 700,000, I think. And then my Instagram has just blown up. The new Reels feature has just taken my account from, I think, like 10,000 um as of last year to almost seventy thousand now wow so that's, <laughs> crazy. that's incredible what, what do you has anything changed did you do anything different or uh not really like i said i think instagram's been kind of pushing their their reels feature and i've been noticing that i'm on the discovery page of like the front of instagram so a lot of people have been finding me there ah, which is crazy yeah that's flattering too yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone who is unaware, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, you have a a group of characters, original characters that are based off of uh, different inspirations and whatnot. Break down each character. We'll start off with arguably your most popular character, which is Shark Bay. What's the story <laughs> there? <coming> yeah. uh, <laughs> well... Originally, I've always really loved the ocean. I've always have had an infatuation with the ocean and all of the ocean creatures, and I still do. But I think somebody had commented on those teeth, because I had originally done them just for fun, and I did a character with them, and it ended up being Bouzette. But they were just like, those look like shark teeth. So I was like, I could probably try something like that. Yeah. And I ended up doing a real light shark, and then somebody suggested, oh, you should try black light. And then I was like, that would be impossible. But I tried it, and I ended up hating it and almost not even releasing it. But I, I did. And then it became my most popular freaking character, and now I have to do it all the time. <laughs> because nobody shuts up about it. <laughs> why, why were you so against it to begin with? 
Oh gosh, I had so many problems, uh, so many mishaps with the makeup because the the blue around the mouth is really hard to blend out. And then um, I've been sick for like the past year and a half. So anytime my nose runs or anything like that and I have to wipe it away, I wipe the makeup away too and have to redo it. Mm. So it's just a pain. And then the lighting was was a tough thing with that one, but I people ended up eating it up, so. <laughs> Nice choice of words. Was it your first time using a blacklight at that point? Oh, God, no. I'd been doing blacklight for a long time. I think my first one was like a deer, and then I ended up doing my jellyfish. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on from Shark Bay, uh, the jellyfish character, which I get a very strong shark tail inspiration from. I've just... I really like jellyfish. Actually, we've planned a uh, trip to an aquarium once all this clears up so I can go and touch some moon jellies. But I wanted to try and make the hat, and I ended up making that out of, like, a garbage bag and wire, and people liked it. <laughs> um, it's believable. But... <laughs> <laughs> and then people started asking for the shark tail uh, audios, and I was just like, mm. oh, yeah, that, that would actually quite work. So... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I didn't even see the connection. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, because like, like I said, like that's that's where I, I see the inspiration from because like mm -hmm. I remember you do TikToks with audio from that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's because people <clears throat> wouldn't wouldn't stop suggesting it. <laughs> the uh, you said a deer character. It was more more like a, a fawn or a fairy character? Yeah, it was kind of like a fawn. It was one of my very rough first blacklight um, characters before I had even gotten the, the good paints that I have now and like hang of the lighting because that's all very touchy. But yeah, <laughs> that's what I started out with. I actually recently went back through all of my videos to see uh, where I've come from and it's changed a lot. Yeah. What inspired you to start off with that character? I had a friend, Nissa V, and they had done a lot of blacklight stuff, and I had followed them. And I was like, that would be kind of cool, neat to play around with. And I, I saw some blacklight uh, body paints in, I think, just Walmart. They were, like, cheap ones. I was like, ah, I can try that. Mm -hmm. And then it ended up being my gimmick, so <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that, like, the, the forest... Uh, and woodland creatures is that kind of like you started off as formative fox of course and fox is your mascot uh yeah. were you leaning always leaning towards having uh like woodland creatures as your persona i started off not even thinking i was gonna do cosplay really <laughs> yeah <laughs> well they, uh, amazing <laughs> the directions you take i know i ended up here and i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> Now, a, a, a recent character uh, is a little bit more terrifying, and it's uh, inspired by, correct me if I'm wrong, but an anglerfish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's another one I used to be obsessed with when I was a kid. I used to have um, picture books and, like, biology books on anglerfish because I thought they were so cool mm -hmm. and just neat. And that's one where I wanted to experiment with, like, the teeth prosthetics and see if I could do that. It was kind of a challenge to myself, I think. Yeah, because with that one, the teeth is like very much on the outside. It's on your chin. It's across your face. Yeah, that one it, it's um it's kind of hard to emote in because it's it's a full prosthetic piece that goes on the bottom and the top, and they're two separate. So trying to emote, I have to be like <laughs> 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 and really over emote. Like yeah. pay attention to these teeth, not these ones in here. <laughs> oh yes, I'm supposed to make those sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Like so, you have a lot of characters, and forgive me if mm -hmm. I'm missing any. But uh, are there any other sea creatures that you cosplay as? Um, not that I can really recall. We do the shark, the anglerfish, and the jellyfish, which tend to be my three main characters that everybody likes and mm. have been a part of, like the ocean mother tag that everybody's kind of branded me with. <laughs> right. Moving on from there, I, I, there's two other characters that uh, come to mind. Uh, one of them very recently, in fact, you, uh, I think you were doing the makeup for it on Thursday, and that is like, it is currently May 19th, so that means the 27th, and it's a, I want to say fairy or fey character. You got the ears, you have the, the the neckline and the beautiful works. What character is that and what what inspired that? 
I just had this idea in my head where I wanted like a very energy like um appearance kind of like an elf ish okay. um and I, I really wanted to mix like oranges and purples because I, I i wanted to try something new with the color schemes that i've been doing because I, I tend to lean between like the pinks and the purples and greens so i wanted to try something a little bit different but it was just an it was a picture i had in my head that i really just wanted to create with and uh that's what it ended up being do you have a name for this character no, I am absolute shit with naming my characters, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. <laughs> oh, that's fine. As long as you can identify him, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, and finally, the, 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 the character that is at, on the last of my list, and again, I apologize if I'm missing any, and you will feel free to point out if I'm missing any, is I think the one that takes the most work, the most dedication, and the most conviction, it's this demon blood-soaked in the bathtub, just like I want to say both enticing and terrifying character that you break out every once in a while, especially around Halloween. What the hell Foxy? <laughs> I really love gore makeup and I don't get to do it as much as, as I'd like to like just the darker side of things. I've always, uh, I've really been obsessed with horror movies since I can mm. remember. Um, but those characters do something very, particular for me personally because I get to play a totally different character than I normally do. A lot of my characters are very good. They're very wholesome. Wholesome. So it's just a whole different play. A lot of my characters actually do a lot of things for me emotionally and I get to express feelings and emotions, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, uh, through my works. So a lot of the darker ones are or bad feelings that I get to just healthfully deal with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> people find it entertaining, so why not? <laughs> it, you know, it, it is entertaining. And it is, it is like you can tell like it, it's an inner, an inner expression coming mm -hmm. out. And you are digging and feeding off of something that is mm -hmm. within inside you. It's that's I think that's one of the reasons why you have so many followers and so many fans and, and so many uh, people who support you is because when you portray these characters, the, the the performance that you give is believable. It's genuine and it's it's something that people will like every once in a while you'll you'll see something where you're you're having fun and you're like, Yeah, I can get behind that and then that demon character in the bathtub just you're mean and vicious and vile and whatnot, like yeah, you know what? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, good on you for for channeling that. Uh, it, it it can be difficult for anyone, including you, including me, to mm -hmm. to have that sort of outlet. And um, that's actually a perfect segue into uh, something else that's going on. And it's uh, you are starting to embrace and explore some of the things that bother you and plague you and mm -hmm. um, it being May is Mental Health Awareness Month you've taken steps and incredible steps to open up about this and uh, what what inspired you to start doing this? Well I feel like a lot of people see my work and they can kind of they take what they want out of it and they can see what they want in it and that's that's fine that's artistic expression just in a nutshell people are going to interpret it the way that they want to yeah. uh, but I wanted to kind of give my two cents on why I do what I do um, and I actually made a video explaining um, that my characters have different things or project different things that I might like like Shark Bay is very confident and, and very like Abrupt. sexually confident and open and that's something that I want but yeah. no I don't feel like I necessarily have um so I get to express that when I'm in that character and that's the same with all of my characters and I feel like a lot of people have those those mechanisms whether it's like D&D &D or just something where you can separate yourself but look at it from an outside perspective yep in a yep. sense but I felt like that might help people connect with my art a little bit better and understand better why I do what I do. I 100% agree, and it's it's not really public knowledge, but uh, I, I'm a I'm a bit of a private person myself, 
and I do live in the public eye. I'm a radio personality and I, I do this sort of thing. And uh, May has been a bit of a difficult month for me. And uh, like I have my ways of dealing with it. I've, <laughs> I've talked to a counselor. I, I go to the gym. Um, I do things that are productive and positive. But especially with everything that's going on and the, uh, as you call it, the pepperoni that has taken over the world <laughs> for the past uh, year and change, it is difficult and it is especially difficult to communicate because we have basically been told like, stay home and mm -hmm. don't go out and don't talk to uh, people that you're unfamiliar with. And so it, it feels as though that you're just locked and you're trapped in place and so like it takes a lot to open up especially on a public forum you have a platform i have a platform but mm -hmm. like we can we can sit there and go over a character and 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 a, a script or riff or anything like that but actually opening up and speaking from the heart and speaking with emotions rational or otherwise is very difficult. I find for myself, emotional concepts tend to be pretty hard and they tend to be pretty hard to express, which is why I do things the way that I do. But I find as creators, a lot of people are very disconnected. They see you from uh, a point of view where they don't really see those, those struggles or like those feelings. And it's really hard as a creator to talk about them because I don't want to put that on my people, but I also don't want to have this unrealistic reality that nothing's like wrong or I'm not going through anything and then it's it's just really isolating for me. So I found it really um really liberating to talk mm -hmm. about things like that and just be a little bit more open with my community and the way that it's been received has been really good for me especially right now cuz I I feel that being locked at home and not being able to connect with anybody or see anybody it just feels isolating. Yeah. The, the followers and fans of all different types on different platforms, like they sometimes forget that what we put out there as content creators, what you're seeing is the finished product. Mm -hmm. What you're not seeing is the 10, 15, 20, 45 minutes beforehand, the 75th, 76th take that was erased, the frustration that got to that point. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see is what we want you to see yeah so yeah like it's it's again it's it's understandable and it's difficult to just be like you know what this is this is the real me and you know please don't please don't judge me for it but i'm human just like you yeah let's Absolutely. uh let's, let's let's talk about something a little bit more lighthearted and the fact that uh you have a wonderful group of people that you game with on a three times a week scheduled basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we haven't had a chance to actually talk about these people before. Uh, who are the regular rabble that you uh, game with, beat up, and throw in front of trains? <laughs> well, there's always Zarth. Zarth is in, I think, every stream. He's uh, really dedicated. Um, he's one of my main game companions, and he's mm -hmm. just, he's so nice. I think we have Panda Fu Master, which is my one of my friends actually who's local to me. So we do streams together sometimes. There's Passive Dust, Shadow, Shadow is Hiding, minimal. Starf. Yeah, Minimal, Minimal. Yeah. Minimal's actually pretty new to streaming. Um, okay. He's just getting started, so I, I'm pretty excited for him. And then we have Burke. Yes. Uh, Burke's also just getting started. And, and he's from nice. my hometown. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are local to each other, which I think yeah. is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was it was someone who was uh, started following me on Instagram because of uh, what's happened over the past couple of weeks. Uh, her tag is Red Wolf something something. Am I uh, ringing? Yes. Who's that? Uh, that's uh, Kit Kat on most of my streams, I believe. She's really nice, too. Very, very, very kind. She's feisty. My God. Very <laughs> saucy. <Yeah. laughs> my stream likes to call her saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably so. And uh, I, I've actually, I've, I've, I'm fortunate enough to have the opportunity to to experience this and, and play with this concept because uh, I've actually, you and I have actually started working together as well. 
Um, I've, I've become your unofficial official editor. Yes. I would say official. <laughs> I wouldn't say unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> well, agreement's pending. <laughs> yes. But um, okay. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all that wrapped up together. I mean, first of all, it, it's it's been fun working with you on that. And I, I, like, I want to continue to work with you on that. And there's no question it's going to happen. But um, your YouTube channel has it, it's needed some attention for a while i yeah. mean there's there's been some great work and you do some great work on your own um i was just you know i'm happy to provide what services i can which is just compilations of of gaming but i think what people if you haven't had a chance to yet you check out formative fox's youtube channel is that not only do you get instructional videos but you also get gameplay you do the instructional videos and um, DIY videos on your own. Yeah. For a long time, I was doing the editing on my own. I've gotten some help with the gaming playthroughs and stuff just because, like, I can't sit at my computer for that long. I'm good with the creating, but editing and just staring at a computer for that long is so hard for me. I get easily distracted, and then I, it just nothing gets done. <laughs> Um, so I really appreciate your help <laughs> on that. Also, you're, even if I would have tried and sat at my computer for hours, I definitely couldn't have come up with a product that you did. So <laughs> I'm just, happy you. <laughs> I, 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 it's my pleasure, and that wasn't a setup for a plug for me. I promise. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Uh, <laughs> but uh, some sometimes you just need an outside eye to take a look and you know like piece things together. But with that being said, like. You get re asked repeatedly uh, the same questions, and one of the big questions is, "How do you make those shark teeth? Do you like what do you what do you do when you have that question? Because I know there's a video up, but you still get asked those questions. Oh my God, I I've tried so many things. Um, I've tried on my Instagram. I have like an FAQ highlight thing where I answer a lot of those questions, like where I got my contacts. If UV light hurts your eyes. <laughs> shark teeth any There's light so will many. hurt your eyes if you're staring at it <laughs> yes. yes well i mean a lot of people are under the misconception that like uv lights or black lights are the same as like sunlight which they're not uv lights have a protective covering and if you take that covering off yes it is going to hurt you yeah. but they're specifically designed not to hurt you they're not yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That one gets me heated. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, are you are you planning on doing any new tutorials, any new DIY videos? I have a lot of footage gathered up. It's just a matter of editing it down. And uh, I have the worst part with voiceover because I hate my voice. I end up like tripping over my words, and I just get, end up getting frustrated or not saying the things that I want to. So that's kind of where I get set back with those. Yeah. But yeah. You, you still like you, you very much are connected with your fan base and your community. And I, something that you and I were talking about beforehand is the fact that I, I only found out like three weeks ago that you have a Patreon yes. and you have an incredible following with this Patreon. What is available on Patreon for those who want to support Formative Fox? Um, so <clears throat> what we have is usually full sets of photography, um, access to the Discord, which, um, yeah. And, uh, I've wait, been, wait, which, have... um, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I had, uh, access to the Discord, but a lot of people weren't, weren't really interested in, mm. in that part of it. It was more like the sets of photos. A lot of people were suggesting that I should do early access for the Patreon users, which I considered. And now that I have an editor, it might be worth it. But I don't know. I've, I've got to mold that over a little bit more. But well, you, you, mostly, and I can, you and I can talk about that after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mostly, it's it's been full sets of photos. The $5 one is just everything you see on Instagram plus everything that I take. So I take usually um, 10 to 20 photos per, per set that I do or per makeup that I do. Mm. And then the $15 one uh, is the more risque one, which is why it's set at the same time. <laughs> Fair enough. But, but r risque, like, let's, let's define this because I know that this is probably something that you have 
been approached about many different mm-hmm. times is risque doesn't mean exotic. It doesn't mean erotic. You're not going to post things out there that you can't show family. It means that there is going to be maybe some suggestion, but that's it. Yeah, exactly. I don't show the good bits. The good bits are meant for the special people in my life, <laughs> if there ever is any. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's artistic expression, again, yes. but in a more, I, I don't know, like, suggestive sense, not... Not like erotica, but yeah. It's stuff that you're proud to mm-hmm. pr- put out there. It's stuff that you're yeah. also proud to be a part of. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> the, re- the reason, like, we- we've talked about your community. We talked about the- your incredible support that you have with your community and whatnot. Uh, there has been a couple of uh, times where you have come out on social media and said, quit being an asshole. <laughs> quit Quit asking me these ridiculous questions or requesting these certain things and quit sending me things I don't want to see or hear or anything like that. Um, now, it, it, unfortunately, it, it comes with the territory and it's it's unfortunate that it comes with the territory of an incredible energy, a brilliant content creator, an attractive woman gets harassed. So what are there I, 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 I'm hesitate to ask but are there at least anything any funny stories or interesting interactions or anything like that some positives from this negative that has happened over the past little while I mean for all the like I'm I'm pretty lucky I think I've mm-hmm. only ever had three or four interactions that I can recall that were like negative through my DMs in terms of like harassment so like I count myself as pretty lucky as having the platforms that I do with only that. A lot of the interactions that I have through DMs are very, very positive. I actually have a whole folder on my phone of screenshots of, like, the sweet things and the nice things that people have sent me. So I I count myself as pretty lucky in that sense. That's the only reason I have my DMs open is because yeah. a lot of people reach out to me and and say those positive things or that I've helped them with specific things. There was a topic in one of your streams, and it was when you were playing World of Warcraft with your crew, and it was a topic about uh, cliff jumping or lake mm-hmm. jumping, and you know the the prospect of that and the the excitement and the energy of that is hinged on the fact that the pepperoni will end, mm-hmm. and the freedoms will be granted back, and mm-hmm. there is no longer going to be any fear of any sort of. Uh, illness sickness or or repercussions or anything like that so with that being said what is that like the top five of your post pepperoni bucket list oh i've actually started this list so i'm prepared (laughs) um (laughs) well i know we want to do the cliff jumping thing again we did that with ben and that was so fun um count me in next time damn yes (laughs) you you will be there you will be there i will I really want to go and do a sleepover at an aquarium, uh, and I want to. You can do that. Yeah, you can rent aquariums for sleepovers. <laughs> I want to do it. I've never so, known. I never knew that. I saw it on TikTok, and then I was just like, "That I want that right there. This is mine." Okay, <laughs> 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 two. Uh, so that and petting jellyfish because I know all of that's closed right now. So I really, I just want to visit an aquarium. I want to do a little bit more traveling. I've also recently seen that there are underwater hotel rooms. Uh, you can tell a lot of this is ocean theme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing um, wrong with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of friends all over the place now. I want to go to Scotland to go visit Zarth too. Um, so he's been talking about, he's been talking about coming to Canada, but I was just like, I want to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> How about we all just meet in Iceland? <laughs> that would be cool. That Iceland is on my bucket list too. So Mine too, yeah. <laughs> I really want to go. I, there's just so many places I want to go. Once yeah. this is all done, I, I want to travel a little bit more because I haven't really gotten to. So, yeah. Be- before we wrap this up, big important question. Mm. Have you gotten your vaccination? I am due to get my first one on the 31st. Okay. Do you know which one you're going to get? I think it's the Moderna. Okay. It's either the Pfizer or Moderna. They didn't really specify on the thing, so I, I don't know, I guess. But 
Okay. Okay. No, I, I just, I just want to like, again, everyone's I've been at everyone I've been interviewing. Uh, I've been asking the same question because um, just trying to, to, you know, ease the nerves of people who are unsure. <laughs> so when you get your first shot, uh, will you be giving updates on social media? Yes. <laughs> I, I will be um my mom took it pretty hard she's uh she's in the working class so she's like works frontline all the time mm. um so she had to get it relatively early and she's in the medical field quotation quotation okay. so uh she she said she her arm hurt so bad and she was so tired so i was like good i'm preparing i'm gonna have content available and i'm gonna be <laughs> ready to just sleep so yeah yeah, I, I did the I did the foolish thing. One, um, I got my shot uh, end of April, and um, I got it in this arm, right in the middle of my tattoo, and it felt like I got punched in the arm for about two days. Not not a big deal. Uh, a mere five days later, I went and got the tattoo finished, and then it felt like I just got nailed in the arm. <laughs> yeah. Same I arm, yeah. I've been seeing people on TikTok be like, oh, my tattoo got the vaccination. They, they like, give it to I don't have any. I'm not lucky. I, I just get the vaccination. Damn. I feel like I left out. I missed no. out. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. <laughs> okay. Where can people find you? If they're not already following you, where can people find you on social media and how can they support Formative Fox? Uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube are, are the big three for me. And then for supporting, it would be on Patreon mostly. Or, I mean, you can send stuff to my P.O. box that I got recently um, mm -hmm. or buy stuff off of my wish list if you wish. But, yeah, those, those are the places you can come support me or send me a letter. <laughs> oh, man, imagine getting a handwritten letter. That would be, like, the coolest thing. I, I So I keep... All of the special stuff. Uh, I have this really big black chest and it's got everything that means everything to me. So like that's where I put stuff like that. So I, I would I would cherish it forever. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And yeah, if you know, anyone has an opportunity to go check out uh, Formative Fox's uh, Amazon wish list, I mean, you're, you're buying, you're, you're supporting her by buying her more materials, more props, right? I saw uh, paint, makeup, uh, mm -hmm. costume pieces. It looked like you're trying to build a Velma. Yes, I was trying to <laughs> build Velma. I have the skirt so far, so I need like the the sweater, um, the glasses, and I have the wig. So I, I only need the sweater and the glasses, I think, and the socks. That's it. Yes. There you go. <laughs> the, if you haven't already or you want to go check it out, Formative Fox, uh, pretty much everywhere on social media, Patreon, and yeah, the Amazon wish list is definitely something that would, of course, help out and support mm -hmm. Formative Fox. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs> What's this? Mid-episode ad break? What's going on? Kind of. So I have a Patreon. Yes, the Media Jack has a Patreon. If you would like to support everything that I do and want to help this content continue to move forward, then you can help out by supporting me on Patreon. The first tier is only $1.50 a month. That's it. I just want to put this out there for an opportunity for you to show me what you want to see. If you enjoy this episode or any other prior episodes or any of the content that I've created over the years, now you can help out and help me improve what I do already. Everything that comes from Patreon, your help from Patreon goes strictly and directly to producing this show and other content. Again, the very first tier is just $1.50 a month. Higher tiers will actually get you access to behind the scene videos as well as you get first shot at asking questions for future guests. And the highest tier will actually get you a credit at the end of each episode as executive producer. Check it out for yourself. The link is in the description down below. Or if you like, just go to Patreon and search for The Media Jack, all one word. Now, here's Chris Wells on the Flipside Podcast. When was it last time that we chatted? Oh, dude. You had a toy drive that you were doing. Uh, yeah, so like November or something okay. like that. Okay, good. Um, the toy drive was in December. I herniated a disc at that, by the way. Right, right. So I just wanted to uh, get a baseline as to where we were last time we actually had a conversation. Right. Yep, I slipped the disc um, on my second deadlift attempt. So I didn't get to complete the, the um, contest. 
Um, I had really bad sciatic nerve pain because of that. I couldn't walk for a couple of days. Um, my right leg felt like it was on fire. Um, and I'm still not 100% yet, but I am finally trying to get back in the gym. I went for a little bit today. And I'll probably go before work tomorrow. Um, my powerlifting career may be over, though, so that sucks. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah. Like, that's I haven't deadlifted. Sucks. I haven't deadlifted um, over 315 pounds since that, and my second deadlift attempt was 585. So I'm, like, barely at half of what I've been able to pull before. So, so okay. We'll, we'll go We'll go on the record here now. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> might as well. I mean, we're going to jump in yeah. at any point in time anyway. Um, yeah, totally. So, what, like, what, it, what is it? Like, is it the pain? Is it, like, a restriction? You could feel it? Is it psychological? Like, what's stopping you? So, I can tell something there. It doesn't hurt, like, right. when I'm walking around like now, but I can feel something that's wrong. And imagine if you like had to pop your neck, you know what I mean? And it's like, imagine that same feeling of like, all I have to do is this. And it's just, yep, yep. and that's what it feels like. It feels like as soon as I have any type of load, that's like pulling me forward a little bit. I feel like that vertebrae that's messed up is just like right on the precipice of just, but it's done. So, hmm. and it, it's definitely in my head a little bit. Um, I don't know if I told you I'm in PTA school. So to be a physical therapist assistant. Um, so I know how to help <laughs> myself. Right. Uh, it's just a matter of do I have the, the time to help myself? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you you are an incredible specimen. There is no argument there. And uh, as oh. yeah, 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 here comes the flattery. Um, so so uh, be, you know, but like like this this potentially could be the end of your. Uh, heavy lifting, power lifting yeah. career, but this yeah. isn't the end of any sort of fitness life for you. No, definitely not. Um, I just I enjoy going to the gym. Um, so it's just I am also very competitive, whether it's with other people or myself. Yeah. So, like to get motivated, people ask me all the time, like, "How Chris? How do I get motivated?" And I'm like, "Dude, I have no idea how to motivate you. I look at old PR videos of myself." Yeah, and I'm like. That weak son of a bitch, I can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. That dude was strong as hell. Yeah. And I just can't, man. I can't do it right now. I have zero time to myself. Fair enough. I'm in school full time and I'm basically working full time. And this tough. Well, you also like again, anyone who doesn't follow you on TikTok, I mean, shame on you for one. Uh two, you're 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 absolutely not shy of the fact that you uh you have a bit of an OCD issue where you uh show up hours or even at at the very <laughs> least a half an hour before you were scheduled to be anywhere just to make sure mm-hmm. that a random meteor doesn't come out of nowhere and like cause yep. catastrophe in your pay, in your place. What if it does? Then I'm double late. I can't be late for anything, and I don't know why. Yeah. And it's like, I won't even do it on purpose. Sometimes I do. But, dude, I will show up straight up 30, 45 minutes early. And it's because I'm like, oh, it takes me, like right now, I think it takes me 30 minutes to get to work. No, it doesn't. It takes me 18, maybe. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a solid half hour. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with that, though. I mean, like, yeah. 18 minutes to get to work. If you plan, I'm like, okay, I, if I leave now, 19 minutes, I'm good, right? No, yeah. there's too many variables in the way. So the way you're going about things, like you schedule things so that you have zero or close to zero issues, fault, reasoning for being late or anything yeah. like that. So I can see how that can chew up your schedule. It's definitely helped in the past because it, in school, so one day um, we had finals coming up and every, we had just testing on different days all over the place because each class had two separate finals, a written and a practical, and they were on different days. Yeah. So I had eight finals. <laughs> it was nuts. Um, one of them I thought was on a Thursday. Don't know why it was on, or I thought it was on a Wednesday. It was on a Thursday. So I show up for the test on yeah. Wednesday. I'm on the third floor of our building and I'm running through the building. <laughs> I'm starting, I'm running late now. I'm like, where's this door? And I'm like, all my classmates, my friend Nate, who's in the program, listen, if Nate watches this, Nate texted me and he said, hey dude, where are you? And I was like, I'm looking for the class, dude. He, <laughs> said, it's up- he said, it's upstairs. 
our regular class was on the second floor. The testing building that I was at was on the third floor. So I'm like, no, Nate, I'm not that. We just had regular class that day, and everyone was in class like, we're friends. And I'm on the third floor running around, and Nate's like, it's all it's upstairs, bro. And I'm like, and then I finally come like barging into the regular class when it dawned on me what it was. Yeah. And my teacher was like, we're going to start. We figured something out. <laughs> you know what? That. That is that is adorable. That is that is wonderful. <laughs> My teacher had faith. They're like, Chris is never late. Something's wrong. He's either dead or he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. no to start yet. He's gonna be carrying one of his limbs underneath his arm. Like we're gonna have to patch mm-hmm. him up, then teach the class. Yep. Oh boy. So um, because we haven't had a chance to actually talk a whole heck of a lot since November, a lot has happened. Now mm-hmm. uh, again, anyone who is unfamiliar with you or unfamiliar with me. I live in Canada. I live in British Columbia. You live in Alabama. In Alabama. <laughs> yes. Okay. We both live in the northern hemispheres. But especially with what's been happening over the past couple of months, you had a cold snap that was unnatural for someone who lives in northern Canada. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you don't live in Texas. Let's let's be right. clear. But at the same time, like you did feel the effect of that. A little bit. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed was I mean, it got it got chilly here, but it was it was rough, rough. I have um a few friends and a few of my classmates had family in Texas. Yeah. So I mean we were constantly trying to talk to them about everything that was going on. The worst thing that happened to me was just watching the like callousness that a lot of people had on the topic. That really got under my skin. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't like stuff like that from, from either side. And I caught, I caught heat, man, from, you know, my teammates that <laughs> thought that every, they deserved it. You know what I mean? Because they just live in a red state. Shit like that bothered me. That has nothing to do with it though. Mm-mm. Like, like, Agreed. It, well, like again, differences in climate and differences in country. My place is insulated because it has to be. I live way up north, and you know there is a real legitimate chance in the dead of winter it'll hit minus forty, and that's minus right. forty Celsius and Fahrenheit. So my house is built for that. Uh, if you live in the deep south of the United States, your houses are built for venting heat. That is how they're designed. So to hit a cold yeah. snap like that. You're you're basically grabbing a summer animal, a a a desert animal, and throwing them into Antarctica and go, okay, hang out here for two weeks. No, yeah. you are taking something out of its element. Yeah, it's like, it was like ninety five degrees here today, and like that's a <laughs> it's not even summer yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just typical weather here, man. Like in, and in Texas, it's the same. Like you get you get uh, like four days of spring and then summer. <laughs> Jesus, springs on like that. That Wednesday sure was delightful, and then <laughs> <laughs> the whole atmosphere catches on fire. Yeah. So yeah, and when it, I don't know, man, stuff like that bothered me. And that's one of the things that made me decide just to not even do the whole like political arena thing anymore on TikTok. Yeah. I was already not planning on it anyway after the election because it was just an election year. So that's really what kind of sparked my interest in it. But just watching people go, just full on heartless on anybody and everybody. Nah, I ain't about that. It, it, we, we, we tend, we, we are currently living in a world where people get hypersensitive and have knee jerk reactions without thinking things through. I even catch myself doing it from time to time where, you know, I'll see something or I'll hear something or I'll read something like, well, that's not right. And I go, well, hold on. Just, just take a moment. Think about it. Is this really going to affect my life? To yeah. the point where I have to protest or 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 grandstand or something like that. No, it's not. I can be offended by something and still move on with the rest of my life. Yep. It just it's just someone else's opinion or thought or action or anything like that, right? So me going mm-hmm. on to social media and saying like, ah, this is wrong. It's like no, like no, this is my opinion, and quite frankly, I don't need to share it. But we live in a world where everyone has a platform now, and they feel as though they have to share it. Yeah, and that I've said since like 
So I was like 20 something years old, man. I was like Facebook and like just social media in general is going to be the downfall of society because it gives the dumbest <laughs> people the loudest voices, me included. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people that are like, Chris is a standout guy. And I'm like, what are you guys follow me? <laughs> I'll tell you why I follow you still is because A, your stories from work and B, moments with or thoughts with Chris or moments with Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Those are delightful because like I don't, I don't I don't know what the process is if if you're just a one take wonder with some quick editing but those are utterly hilarious it's it's a mix of common sense with uh just a stream of of consciousness thrown in every once yeah. in a while <laughs> I need to get back to those everybody misses those I just I don't have enough time in the mornings to do them and people would already like I would do them at like eight thirty, and they're like, "It's not early morning anymore." And I'm like, "It <laughs> is for me, okay." <laughs> and now, like, I have to be up at like six forty just to make it to school thirty minutes early. So, yeah, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't have the time. Yeah, now you 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 go to school full time. Uh, you also tend to be working full time. That is correct, right? You have full time mm -hmm. hours both sides. Uh, but also, like taking a look at your background there, you're working on a home office, a home studio. Yeah, you can see I'm not done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dressing there. It's like you can't see it. It was not, you know. But yeah, it's this vinyl flooring. <laughs> hey, it looks good. Just, it looks yeah. great. I wanted to have a backdrop because this is so, this is an enclosed garage in a house that I've rented for the past like six years. And I've let this room be the room that my dogs kind of have whenever I'm not home. Like I'll put a baby gate right there and they were just chilling here. It's the biggest room in the entire house. It's a yeah. full on garage. And then one day it just dawned on me like, my dogs have the biggest room in my entire house. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to do so many cool things. So like I have a couch for people to hang out on and then I have a chair for people to hang out on. I have my guitar rig from when I was in a band over here. I'm like all sorts of cool things. So, and then I decided to put that up because I was just like, walking through Home Depot with a buddy one day, and I was like, that looked neat as a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did it. I still have some. I'd like to finish that sooner or later, but I'm not going to. No, it, it looks great. Like Unless you actually pointed out, like, hey, this is flooring. It, it looks yeah. awesome on the wall. Appreciate it. They keep falling. Is it up there now or good? But that, so you can see this little piece right here. Yeah, yeah. Know, it's actually on top. <laughs> and I was just too lazy to go get it. And <laughs> you can yeah. barely see them. There's little three M tape squares up there. Those also used to be panels that just gave up, gave up on life. Well, never you're renting, quit. You're renting the place. It's not like you can put up like liquid nail or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to keep it as removable as possible. I met the lady who owns it. And she's super nice, but I mean, they probably wouldn't care. But I don't. I mean, I I don't feel like pulling that back down. <laughs> Well, I, I put up all this foam uh, since last we talked, and uh, I just used um, um, crafting hot glue, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I, just, I, I quickly did one one square and put it up there, and then tore it down. And, hmm. Well, I rent the apartment. I I guess I can deal with this because <laughs> I want to get some. I want to get some for up here so it doesn't echo as much when I'm in here. Yeah, it's a good idea. So, what is the purpose of this? Uh, room that you're working with I just do some of my TikToks in here and I just wanted to have less of a like skin toned wall behind me because I'm a very pale individual I know a lot of you can't tell <laughs> no, I but I I just blend in it's like camouflage when yeah. I'm doing a TikTok with my own walls back here and out the algorithm is very attractiveness based and I was like I gotta do what I can so this is saying the same but I can fix the wall <laughs> How has uh, TikTok been for you uh, since we last we chatted? It's okay. Um, I I took like a couple weeks off there for a little bit, um, just with life and things going on. And everybody was like, "Chris, oh my god, what's going?" It's like just doing stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm back. I'm back now. Yeah. And I'm trying to get back in the the habit of posting more regularly. Um, it genuinely is kind of tough though because. So, like, if I ever have to close at work on a day that I have class, I go from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah. Then I just I go from one to the other, and it just doesn't leave a whole lot of room for me to, like, wind down and then have a funny idea and then, yeah, you know, make that idea happen. Especially the more and more, like, perfectionist I want to be with the video topic. Mm. 
Uh, like if I really, I have one. I haven't posted it yet, but I'll tell you about it. I, it's two guys hanging out in a car, and one's like, "Hey, man, here's the ox cord." And he's like, "I don't want the ox cord." And he's like, "Just play whatever you want." And he's like, "No, nah, bro, everybody says that." And he's like, "Just play it." And he starts playing the Barney theme song. He's like, "Bro, are you fucking playing?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm just kidding." And then he plays like the heaviest song that I have on my phone, and then he's just staring, like, <laughs> staring for approval. Like, is this the normal music that you wanted me to play? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny, but I haven't posted it yet because it's not perfect. And that's just how I am as a person. Ooh, I got diagnosed with ADHD. <laughs> no and shit. So I, went to, oh, I went to the doctor and I was like, I think I have ADHD. And she was like, tell me your symptoms. And I did. She's like, damn, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wouldn't have anything to do with the, uh, the, the bang or the energy drinks that you drink. No. <laughs> no. No. I still drink those, though. <laughs> uh, we had to do uh, a, a couple exercises in class the other day because we wanted to test, like, respiration rate and heart rate as as related to activity levels. Right. <laughs> and they tested my blood pressure. And they were like, okay, that's a little unnerving. And then my heart rate was a little elevated. They are like, do you drink caffeinated beverages, Chris? And I was like, no, I mean, I dabble. <laughs> I <don't> dabble. <laughs> Every now and then. And they're like, how much caffeine have you had today? And I was like, six? hundred milligrams." <laughs> and they're like, Jesus. And I was like, ten milligrams, but it's And they're like, you should stop. And they're like, sure, whatever. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. I ordered a 12-pack of Rain later that day off Amazon. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, Rain probably knows your home address. You know, it gets to the end of the month. If you haven't ordered yet, they're like, something's wrong. <laughs> it's like the story of the guy who ordered pizza every day, and he didn't for a week, and everybody was like, uh-oh. And then they called the cops, and the guy was like, had a heart attack or something. Oh, geez. That's going to be me. <laughs> it's going to be me. And my gas station is going to be like, Chris, I haven't come to get a two-pack of rain in the last couple of days. You should probably go check on him. <laughs> What's your favorite flavors, by the way? Boy, oh. So the Razzleberry rain is heaven. It is super good. And then... The lemon head rain is also good. That's about the only rain that I like, though. Bang has a lot of flavors that I like. The purple haze, uh, <laughs> rose rose, uh, bankster berry. Uh, there's a bunch. I'll uh, drink all of them. It, 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 was, it was actually because of you that uh, I, I went and got a couple of Bang energy drinks. And um, I think I had one, it was, it was like a raspberry something something from Bang. Yeah. Um, and then I, there was a birthday cake flavored one and I gave that to Ooh. my girlfriend like this is all yours <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's, no, she's that got a sweet weird. tooth yeah that was weird it tastes like straight up liquid icing I can't do that that's too sweet <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how you liquefied this but I mean good on you I just can't do it yeah so you still creating on TikTok um, mm -hmm. I did subscribe to your YouTube channel although <laughs> like, like you said you had to take some time off and that's sure. what a lot of people don't seem to understand at times is that like you, me, anyone else who work in the public eye or dabble in the public eye, you know, like we have other things in our lives. We have to, at the very least, take a break every once in a while. Like we have to, yeah. just like anyone else, we have to have a vacation. But with that yeah. being said, I mean, stepping away from the political realm, you are getting more into just like more stories and more comedy and more, a little, a little bit more skits. Um, what else is it that you're working on right now? So I, I have a bunch of like long skit, long format ideas, and that's what I want to take onto my YouTube channel when I have the time to do it. I have a YouTube room like on the other side of my house. It's got like a green screen and everything set up. Cool. Um, and it's just the same type of videos that I currently do now, just instead of one minute, they can be like five minutes because as fast as I talk, I can still run out of time. And yeah. I'd like to be able to like kind of go in like, I have one cool idea. It'll be on TikTok, but it's going to be um, if Michael Bay directed an allergy commercial. <laughs> it's going to be great. There's going to be lens flares, slow mo. There's going to be a lot of up angle hero shots. <laughs> it's going to be great. Lots of explosions. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit before I can do that one. Uh, if Michael Bay took on the battle with hay fever. <laughs> yeah. If Michael Bay wanted you to buy Clarence D. <laughs> That one's going to be fun. I just need, I have a camera. I have a decent camera. I just need a friend who knows how to use it. <laughs> yeah. Did you get your shot? Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I got vaccinated a while, but I've been fully vaccinated for like three months. Really? Um, because, yeah, because of the medical program that I'm in, um, a clinic about in the next city north of us called our 
facilities and was like, hey, any students that you have, go ahead and do it. Because we have to go to clinicals and all that stuff. So they just wanted to go ahead and knock us out. Mm. What did you get and what type of reaction did you have? Moderna. And I didn't have, the only thing I had on the first shot was the sore arm. And then the second one, it put me down pretty good. I had a headache pretty bad. And then, like, I had some muscle aches. I called in to work that day. Like, I probably could have gone in, but every time I stood up, I was, like, hunched over and walking like an old man. Yeah, yeah. But it was just for a day, and the next day I was fine. I I have had one shot. Uh, I had Mm -hmm. the Pfizer. It was at the end of April. And much like you, like, same thing. It felt like I got punched in the arm uh, for a couple of days, and then that was it. Uh, My next shot is actually in the next four weeks, I believe. And... um, so far, like I, there's people who have had uh, two Pfizer shots, and uh, again, like the reactions are on a spectrum. Some people are like ah, I, I went I went for dinner that night, not a big deal, and other people, the other side of it, just like no, it it laid me out for like two days. Yeah. Um, a lot of people at my job have been starting to finally get theirs because we're allowed to not wear a mask if we're fully vaccinated. Right. Um, and the only real place that's offering it right now is one of the hospitals in our town. And it's doing Pfizer. And everybody is, like you said, having different reactions. A lot of people are having a worse reaction on the first one than the second one. Mm-hmm. And, like, one guy had, like, my second reaction to with his first. And then the second one, like, he was like, I didn't even know I got a shot. <laughs> other, other than a stab in the <laughs> arm. <laughs> yeah, other than being poked by a random stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Usually a couple of drinks happens before that, but yeah. Yeah, take me to dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Now you work in the public eye, or not? Not in the public eye. You work in customer service, and first of all, my heart goes out to you. So, <laughs> I I was I was the manager of uh, a couple of stores, and I had to work my up work my way up to become manager. Oh, I just I I, I fucking hate people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I work in radio, and I'll, I'll fully admit I hate people. But to work in customer service and to have that type of patience is just insane. Now, with that being said, um, like, has there been much of a pushback when it comes to uh, mask and then in like getting the vaccine and then customer Boy. service? <laughs> I live in Alabama. <laughs> like, the state itself wears a MAGA hat, basically. Like, it is from day one, it <laughs> has been atrocious. We've had a mask in policy at our store and we're constantly having people like lose their shit Mm -hmm. um one time so we have to check tv screens if they're above a certain size i'm checking one at the front door this older lady comes in the mask mandate is over like we're not forcing anyone to wear one we're just like hey we have them right here if you guys would like one we would prefer but it's fine if you don't yeah we have this lady or this girl that's like watching the front door for a little bit she is every bit of four foot eleven she's 18 years old this lady walks in and she goes ma'am do you have a mask and she was just going to be like, we have them right here if you want them. Same story. Yeah, yeah. This lady turns around and, like, barks at her. She's like, the governor said we ain't going to do that anymore. And I turn around, and I just, I'm just like, ma'am, no. And she goes, yes, did. And I was like, that's not what I'm talking about. I said, you're not going to talk to my employees like that. And that's just, like, a habit from being in management myself. Yeah. And she goes, well, then I'm going to leave. And I said, cool, reconcile that with yourself. Like, how are you going to tell this story again when you leave? Like, I don't shop at Best Buy anymore. Why not? They wouldn't let me punch their employees. I don't know. <laughs> like, those naked poops. Like, how is this our fault? Yeah. <laughs> like, someone just asked if you've ever seen a mask, and you're just like, yeah. And and your fellow employee, like, didn't even get out the entire statement. They just asked yeah. a question. That is it. They look for it, man. Like, people come in, and, like, they wouldn't give – the door behind them enough time to close before they're trying to start a fight. Yeah. And now also speaking of that lady, when, when she turned around to leave, you can't leave out that door once it's shut and it had shut. And I was like, you're going to have to go back this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so like, man, you got to no, go. Okay, go, go. Come with me. <laughs> yeah. well, this way. It's fine. You can pop and pop on that way. <laughs> yeah. Last we spoke to, um, you, you had a toy drive going on and then the competition, which unfortunately you, you injured yourself. Do you have any sort of plans or any sort of uh, charity events, competitions, uh, food drives, toy drives coming up? Or maybe it's something off you want to put together? No? Not off the top of my head. Um, the gym that I go to does one every December. 
So I'll probably participate in that one again and just judge. Like I was originally going to do this time, um, man, but then I started feeling good for like four whole days. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And then here we are. I need a wheelchair. So <laughs> I'll probably just help host it this time and be a judge. Yeah. Um, I just have like this much time to do anything. So what is your schedule like? Like uh, when are you done school is, is the important question. I'll graduate in spring of next year. Okay. So I don't have that much longer in the semester. So for instance, our semesters are typically 15 weeks long. Um, our summer semesters are shortened of course to 10 weeks. Our summer semester is shortened to eight weeks because the last two weeks are spent in clinicals and it's all neuro based. So it's like the most, like detailed semester that we have and it's literally half and i go from eight to twelve mondays and wednesdays eight to three tuesdays and thursdays and typically go to work after that and i work 10 to 11 hours um every saturday and sunday so my life is like uh, (laughs) i'm always sweating yeah, 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 yeah. One for one reason or another. <laughs> yep. The people at McDonald's know my name because there's a McDonald's in the parking lot with the Best Buy that I work at, and I was like, "Please just give me." This guy's gonna be huge. Well, no, it's the only meal I eat every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, give me some good news. Give me some good plans or something like that. You've been fully vaccinated, <laughs> and um, I mean, summer's coming up. You you got any plans? I mean, travel. Uh, I. Hot girl summer is going well. <laughs> I, have, I have lost 30 pounds. Since hey. last time, just about the last time I talked to you. Um, mm. I'm down to 202 now. And I had gotten up after quarantine to like right at 230 again. Mm. Uh, my forerunner is coming along swimmingly. That's um, a nice she, truck. She looks very sassy now. And yes. I like it. I think, I think I'm going to name her Jennifer. Or Jessica. I think Jennifer. Or Loretta. No, I want it to be like the most basic name possible. <laughs> like, no, okay. So if you want to go basic, then come on. If you want to go basic, then it has to be Jennifer Lynn. No, that's that's too spectacular. <laughs> you can't have a it's too fancy. It's like I'm thinking like Jeanette. Oh. <laughs> even worse, even worse, Janet. Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you name your car that? Because because that's look cool. at it. It's Janet. Yeah, very janet <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know. I'll name her sooner or later. But it's she's nice, and I like driving her. Yeah. So working on the truck. Uh, no travel yeah. plans or any anything like that in the future? Not off the top of my head. Uh, I I plan on, like I said, I think in the last interview, um, doing Birmingham, I think, is where I'm wanting to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm open to just about anywhere. I just want to get away from this place. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's Birmingham is definitely so far where yeah. I'm planning on going. Yeah, I uh, I have some friends who live in Colorado, Ohio, and New York, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I've 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 made it like a bucket list or even a COVID bucket list of yeah. uh, once 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 it's possible, I'm fucking going traveling. Um, yeah. I've only ever been to the United States. Um, Three no four times in total, uh, two times to Washington State, two times to L.A., and mm-hmm. that is that is like a minuscule sample of what the United States is. Uh, yeah, I've I've traveled from coast to coast in Canada, like been there, done that. I want to fucking go somewhere else. Um, yeah, I want to go to Colorado. That's where I want to like end up. So I want to go to Birmingham for a few years and mm-hmm. do all that, but I want to eventually make my way up to Colorado. If if and when you make your way to Colorado, um, I'm gonna point. I would love to point you in the direction of a couple of friends of mine, um, yep. Lauren and Ethan. You could just meet me there, <laughs> and then we could ride together in my Forerunner. Yeah, this is true. This is very true. I but have a <laughs> so do I. I drive for a living. Um, I don't think that'll work in the United States. Ours are ours are dumber. What do you mean? They pull they pull you over and be like, "Sir, you're too sophisticated. You can't drive here. <laughs> not allowed to." <laughs> so well, I don't have an Alabama driver's license. That's just what I expect. <laughs> I'm gonna get pulled over somewhere else. They're gonna be like, "Sir, <laughs> do you know where you are? <laughs> are you lost?" <laughs> yeah. 
Yay, yeah, fine. You know what? Okay, fine. At one point in time, you and I will meet my friends, Lauren and Ethan, in Colorado. We'll hang out, have a good time. We'll all hit the gym together. Just for the record, A, uh, at the beginning of the year uh, to now, I have lost 10 pounds. So, hey. hey, good on that. And B, if the four of us go to the gym together, I will be the least fit. <laughs> yeah. are, are they also fit fluencers? <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. so, making me look bad now. No, 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 no. God, no. My <laughs> God, no, no. Okay. Um, I, you're busy, and I, I appreciate the time that you've given me today. So uh, let's just wrap this up by just letting people know where they can find you on social media. You can find me on TikTok or Instagram at Chris underscore Wells underscore. I know it's the most creative thing you've ever heard in your life. Mm. It may be difficult to remember. I used to use our names when we made TikToks. So now like everybody just knows my full name. And I'm like, <laughs> me? Could have been yeah. something cool like Mr. Hamilton, but no. I yeah. chose my full first name. <laughs> but you also have YouTube. I do. Um, and it's the, I think it's just Chris Wells on YouTube. <laughs> I haven't posted there in a minute. so <laughs> I think it is just Chris Wells. Thanks. Dude. Again, very creative. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time. Yeah, man.